incremental and provide clean water to human health. And the last keynote speaker will be Prof. Tommy Surya Utomo, SLLM PhD. For Prof. Tommy, the time is yours. I'm sorry for the technical team. Can you share the screen from Prof. Tommy? Uh, thank you very much. I think this is an honor for me to be here as one of the keynote speakers in this international seminar. So because my specialization of my research interest is in international trade law, uh, business law, and also intellectual property, I think uh, it's better for me to use that specialty in this topic and try to connect or link between threat and environment, especially from the perspective of WTO law and policy. So I already prepared uh, several slides for this keynote speech, and I hope everyone can follow uh, the substance of this uh, international seminar. Right, so before I explain a little bit about the introductions to the international threat law and the link uh, between the the trade and the environment, I would like a little bit to explain about the history of the World Trade Organization. Next. I think it takes time. Uh, you know. Next slide, Arya. Next slide. All right, so the history of the WTO. I think it uh, takes time because before we have or before we establish the World Trade Organization in 1994, actually we already planned to establish the International Trade Organization in 1947. But the plan actually was failed because the United States as the country actually to initiate the establishment of the ITO International Trade Organization actually cannot ratify that one. So then other countries, especially in Europe, they also followed uh, not to ratify uh, the Havana Charter in 1947. So for the rest, actually, the issue of the international trade and also the practice of the international trade in international level actually was replaced by the God uh, or the General Agreement on Trade and Tariff uh, of 1947, and then almost for 50 years that all issues in international trade were regulated by the General Agreement on Trade and Tariff of 1947. Until at the end of the Uruguay round, we succeeded, I mean, the international community succeeded in establishing the World Trade Organizations in 1994, and then it Come, it came into force actually on 1st January of 1995. Right, if you look at the origins of the WTO, actually, uh, in, uh, I mean, besides uh, we have, for example, the GATT of 1947, we also uh, witnessed that the GATT has held nine negotiations. Uh, this is start from the Geneva Tariff Conventions in 1947 until the Uruguay round, uh, and then we established the World Trade Organization in 1994. And then at, after, after the establishment of the WTO in 1994, and we have another trade agenda, we call that Doha Development Agenda. Next. So if we look at the agreements in the WTO, there are two categories of the agreements in the WTO. The first one, we call this the multilateral agreement. And the second one is plurilateral agreement. So actually, if you look at the differences between these two, I mean, between the multilateral and also plurilateral agreement, we can see actually the differences is only about the number of the WTO countries to participate or to ratify the agreements. For multilateral, actually, we can see this one in the Annex 1, 2, and 3. And then the last one, actually, the plurilateral, we can see this is uh, categorized as the plurilateral uh, agreement. Next. Next, please. 
Right. This is the details of the agreement in the WTO. So I think this is a good background for us to follow the next slides because if you look at the agreements, actually, it's very, very complicated. You know, it's very, very multi-sectoral and multi we, If you look at the Annex 1, for example, this is the multilateral agreement on trade in goods, and we call this one is the GATT. And there are several agreements actually that can be classified as the, you know, the multilateral agreements in the goods. Uh, for example, the GATT itself, and then ag agreement on agriculture, and also the last one, the agreement of uh, safeguards. And then for the Annex 1B, actually, this is very important as well because this is general agreement on trade in services or GATS. And then for the 1C, we, can, we call this one the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, or we call this one uh, as TRIPS. And we can see this, the, the Annex 2, actually, this is uh, the DSU. DSU actually is the law or procedure law actually concerning uh, the procedures to manage and maybe to settle the case amongst uh, the member of the WTO. And then we can also the Annex 3, Threat Policy Review Mechanism. Actually, this is um, the mechanism that already provided by the WTO to review uh, the regulations uh, in all members of the WTO to see whether the members actually already comply with uh, the WTO agreements, or we call this the covered agreements. And the last one actually is the plurilateral trade agreements, which is uh, only selected countries that participate or ratified the agreements. And we can see two uh, of four. Uh, the first one actually is about uh, the trade uh, civil aircraft, and the last one is uh, uh, the last one actually is dealing with the procurement or government procurement. So why is only two? Because the other two actually, which is uh, the bovine meat and also the second one is dairy products already uh, not in uh, force because it's already uh, ended, uh, especially in 1997. Right, so the question is why we have to talk about the issue, I mean, between or the link between the trade and the environment. The issue is because this is not a new issue. Actually, if we look at the history of the WTO, the issue uh, where the members actually uh, discuss about the trade-related uh, environmental issues is already uh, discussed actually in the previous rounds. Next. Yeah, this is just basic rules of WTO law and policy. There are four big uh, groups actually when we are talking about the basic rules of WTO and, I mean, WTO law and policy. The first one we are, discussing about the non-discriminations. There are two types of the non-discrimination. The first one is most favored nation, and the second one is national treatment. And then the second one, if we are talking about the basic rules, liberty or law and policy, we are also discussing about the market access. Um, there are two types of the market access. The first one actually is tariff uh, barriers, and the second one, non-tariff barriers. And then uh, the third one is the protections against unfair uh, trade. In unfair trade, there are two groups, actually. The first one, we call it dumping, and the second one is subsidy. And then the last one is, we are talking about the trade and competing interests and values. So if there is a conflict between the national or the domestic regulations, or maybe interests, uh, with the law and policy of the WTO, uh, the national or domestic laws uh, will prevail. So that's the rules uh, when we are talking about the WTO law and policy. Next. So if we are talking once again about uh, the link between trade and negotiation, there is no specific agreement in the WTO actually discussing about the environment. So the question is why we, we are discussing about the link itself? Because even though there is no specific agreement in the WTO, but the issue of trade and environment actually can be found in the WTO agreement, but indirectly, uh, you know, for example, you know, from the fundamental goals of the WTO, we can see two types of it. Next. Next. Yes, if you look at, you know, the WTO, actually there are two fundamental goals. The first one we call that sustainable development. 
So even though there is no specific agreements about the environment, there is no title about the trade and agreement on the WTO uh, agreements. Uh, we we can see the spirit of the sustainable development uh, vision in all or maybe in certain or selected agreements that uh, we can see in the framework of the WTO. The second one, we can see also the principles of the protections of the environment, also the preservation of the environment through several or certain agreements in the WTO. Next. In general, actually, if we are, if we are discussing about the link between trade and environment, there are two types that we have to focus on. The first one actually is about the impact of the environmental policies on trade. And the second one is the impact of threat itself on the environment. So this is the link. Once again, even though there is no specific agreement on environmental issues, but we can find the theme of the two uh, indicators of the link between trade and environment. The first one is the impact of the environment policies on trade. And the second one is the impact of trade on the environment. Next. So this is the examples why I said that the link between the trade and environment actually is not a new issue. This is all issue because if we look at the historical, uh, the historical uh, development of the WTO, we can see, for example, uh, at the end of the Euro round in 19, 1986 to 1994, actually, they already discussed about the link between trade and environment. The second one, if we are uh, looking at the Doha Development Agenda uh, from 2001 and 2007, they already discussed about this. So again, this is uh, 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 discussed by the members actually because they think you know the the link between threat and environment is still very important and relevant to the current situation. And then the last one actually, this is the current um, development about the issue between the link. Uh, sorry, between the trade and environment, actually we can see also from uh, the Environmental Goods Agreement, or we call that EGA in 2014, where there are a lot of members of the WTO try to uh, discuss again uh, about the importance of the environment in the practices of the international trade. Next. So this is just the examples. Uh, the link between the trade and environment. For example, in 2001, uh, especially on 5th of April 2001, there is a case. Uh, there was a case uh, at the time between European communities uh, and Canada. So the case actually was brought by the Canada or Canadian government because they think uh, the policy of the European community actually is unfair and they think it is not according to the law and policy of the WTO. So it deals with the, the ban of imported goods um, consisting asbestos. Okay, as we know, actually asbestos is not very healthy for, for our environment. So that's why at the time, a lot of countries actually applied uh, the policy to ban the imported goods uh, concerning or consisting of asbestos. So Canada thinks that the, uh, you know, the policy from the European community actually was unfair because they think there is another substitute materials that were allowed by the French government. France, as we know, actually is one of the members of the uh, European communities at the time. So they think, you know, if there is a, substitutes uh, of the products, it means that this is like product. So if they ban the imported goods, they also uh, ban another goods that's consisting of the aspects of, so that's why they brought this case actually to the dispute settlement body of the WTO. And then I think some parts of the Canada uh, complaints actually were settled and then the Paddle actually uh, won uh, several uh, claims from the Canada yeah, through this case. So from this case, actually, we can see the link between the trade and environment. Yeah, it's very, very close relationship between the trade and environment. So sometimes 
uh, we cannot see which one is the cause, which one is the effect, because sometimes it can be uh, vice versa. And the second one is uh, the case deals with the United States and uh, other countries, because the case actually is brought, uh, was brought by uh, four countries. The first one is India, Malaysia, Pakistan, and Thailand. So this case actually deals with the prohibition of certain streams and also uh, stream products. So they said that the policy that uh, 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 regulated by the US government actually is unfair because they think this is part of the discrimination. So that's why uh, these four countries actually uh, complain and then brought this case to the dispute settlement body of the WTO. And the last one actually is the case dealing with the uh, conventional gasoline. Uh, this is between the United States and the case actually is, uh, was brought by two countries, which is Venezuela and Brazil. So this is just the examples how uh, the relationship between the trade and environment is so close. So that's why I think um, uh, when we are discussing about the international trade, we should also look at to other uh, close issues, for example, like environmental uh, issues. Next. So this is, um, this is just recent development of the negotiations. It's like trade negotiations under the WTO per, uh, perspective. Uh, there are four things that they are discussing right now. The first one is about trade and climate change. The second one is about trade and green economy. The third one is about sustainable development goals or SDGs. And the last one is cooperations with multilateral environmental agreements. So this four actually is uh, the evidence that how the importance of the trade and environment is. So that's why I think uh, we have to focus on this one because in the next five years or maybe in the next 10 years, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of cases dealing with the trade related environmental issues. So I think that's all that I can share with all participants. And once again, I congratulate, uh, I congratulate uh, all participants already uh, or maybe uh, have been selected by the committee to be the speakers of maybe to be the presenters of, uh, to these international seminars. And I hope the international seminars will be going well. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for Tommy for the uh, presentation about the uh, correlation between trade law and environment. We actually still have a little time left. So we now enter the Q&A session. I would like to have two questions for those who in this room and those who in the Zoom can might want to use the raise hand feature or maybe leave the comments in the chat. So any questions? So actually for Tommy, that I recently read some papers on article about uh, the green economy or the green investment. So today's trend is not about investment for the sake of investment, but it's also uh, needs some sustainability uh, in that aspect. What do you, what your perspective about these issues? Right. So right now we believe that we are okay. Now in Indonesia, we are promoting, uh, we call the green economy and the green investment. Green investment means that all the investment has to focus on the development that is actually can be categorized as the environmentally friendly development. So we have to focus on the protections of the environment. So that's why if we want to invest, uh, for example, in Indonesia, because I think it was in two, uh, uh, 2020, right? The government actually um, announced that now Indonesia will introduce about the green investment where, you know, if you want to invest, you have to focus on the protections of the environment. 
And the second one, you are asking about the green economy, right? The green economy actually means that the economy that try to minimize the negative impact of the development on environment. So all of the economy actually they concern with the environmental issues. So that's why uh, we call this a very, very good uh, example actually to preserve and also to protect our environment in the future. Because through this policy, I think uh, actually we comply with the policy uh, from the WTO that we can see actually also focus on the uh, environmentally friendly. Oh, it's so interesting topic too, but I heard some. So environmental issues is something that's really going on trend on today's global change society. So I heard some some like a phrase that says today's world's grammar is not do you speak English, but more like do you speak environmentalist? I heard something like that, Professor. So 